Hello everyone, welcome to my FlossTube channel. My name is Jessie Lee and I'm coming at you with video number <laughs> Frick a frack, I don't know what number it is. For my life update today, I had planned on just sharing a few sweet things I've enjoyed the past few days, like the wonderful dusk walk I took along the lake near my house. It was really lovely, and I was finding lots of wild bergamot bee balm growing amongst the cattails, which I thought was just beautiful, and it looked like this. And also, I got a little present under my bird feeder from the woodpecker who likes to visit. This beautiful little feather. I just thought that was so special. However, today I had a really unexpected experience that really sort of felt like a miracle to me. Um, I'm a pantheist, so my relationship with God is sort of a bit less personal than perhaps a Christian relationship with God would be. But what happened today made me truly just know in my heart that God sees me and is there for me. And I just feel really grateful and... I just want to talk about it. The past few days have just not been our normal routine. Um, on Friday, we had one of Tim's co-workers over for dinner. She very kindly volunteered to watch our pets for us while we're away on our upcoming camping trip. So we had her over for dinner and to introduce her to all of the critters. And then today, Sunday, um, Sylvia had a birthday party to go to for one of her classmates, and I was the one who was going to have to take her there. I've shared before that I have pretty severe social anxiety, so having to get through two visits in the course of one weekend was really tough. And it was especially tough because one of those visits was taking place here in my house. I just have this thing where I cannot let anyone who doesn't live with me see my house not totally clean. I just can't. Um, I have a lot of childhood trauma surrounding cleaning, we'll just say. On the daily, my house is just average messy. You know, I have two kids and a lot of pets and a husband who was probably a cockroach in a past life. Um, so day to day, I spend a manageable amount of energy just trying to keep the life mess within a reasonable threshold. My house is not the messiest and it's not the cleanest. It's just average. However, certain types of messes are really triggering to me. And also certain acts of cleaning can be really triggering too. And then having to clean my house for someone to come over and see it is often just meltdown inducing. So the couple days leading up to the coworker visiting for dinner where I was cleaning and getting the house ready were not great days. They were pretty bad, not graceful at all. And then today I took Sylvia to this birthday party which she was so excited for. And I had to be there standing around making small talk with a bunch of parents who I don't know. Ahead of time, I did my hair and makeup to help me feel a little more confident. And I do enjoy getting dolled up. I do it a little bit for all these videos, but it's not something I usually do every day. Sylvia had a tremendous time at the party. And then we came home and the kids went to bed and Tim left for work for tonight, and I sat down to get ready to make this video. And then I got a phone call. It was a group of family members who I have a really complicated relationship with. And they live about five hours away from here, and I see them like twice a year or less. And they were calling me to tell me that they were visiting me. In fact, they were five minutes away from my house. And the reason for their visit was actually really sweet. And they did make the effort to drive five hours to come and see me. But the surprise element that they chose was just not okay. However, my house is still clean and 
I look nice today. So when they got here, we ended up having a pretty pleasant time when if they had spur of the moment visited me on a typical Sunday, I probably would have had a complete breakdown. They kept their visit short and sweet. And then after they left, I just sat down feeling completely bewildered and so grateful. Like I truly feel in my heart that the universe aligned these days to happen the way they did for a reason. I'm just like, thank you, God, for putting me through so much stress <laughs> these past few days because it protected me from a situation that otherwise would have been completely unbearable. <sighs> so I had totally intended to just give a nice little life update talking about just like the sweet, nice things that happened this week. And I was just going to skip over all of the heavier stuff. But then I got that phone call and ended up totally having the chills. And I just really felt like talking about it. So I do hope that wasn't too much and that you don't mind. And now I got to figure out how to segue into talking about cross stitch. <laughs> How about I begin with something really fun, and that is revealing the winners of my giveaway that I did to celebrate reaching 300 subscribers here on my channel. This is actually the second giveaway that I have done here on my floss tube. For the first one, I put all the entrance names in a hat and then let my son choose the winner. And for this giveaway, I thought it would be fun to give my daughter the opportunity to pick the winners. And when I ran that idea by her, she was so psyched. She told me she wanted to wear a fancy dress and have me do her hair. And she was so into it. But unfortunately, in order to make sure that everybody who wanted to enter the contest had time to do so, we waited to choose the winners until yesterday. Yesterday, Saturday, turned out to be pretty busy for us. Um, we were out of the house most of the day running errands. So by the time we got back home and sat down to choose the giveaway winners, Sylvia and I were tuckered out. And also, I think when Sylvia saw herself being recorded on my phone, she got a bit camera shy because she just wasn't acting like her normal bubbly self. Plus, she didn't even get to put a cute dress on like she had wanted to, which is too bad. So we were totally happy to choose giveaway winners, but in the video I have of us doing so, we might not seem the most enthusiastic. And it's just because we had had a tiring day. But here is the video and here you'll get to see who won the 300 subscriber celebration giveaway. Hello, my floss tube friends. I have a special guest with me right now. Who are you? Sylvia. Yeah, Sylvia is going to do the honors of drawing the winners for my 300 subscriber giveaway. Are you ready, Sylvie? Yes. The first pattern that we are going to draw the winners for is this one, Life with Cats Royal Audience by The Blue Flower. And this one had five entries and I wrote them down on little scraps of paper and put them in our Totoro bowl. And Sylvie's gonna do the honors. All right, reach in and pick the winner, Sylvie. Okay, the winner is Helen Pie. Helen. The next pattern that we're giving away is Flower Cats by Soda Stitch. And this one had six entries. So we have those names in our Totoro bowl now. And Sylvie's gonna choose one. Great job, Smoochie. Can you open it? Well, this is going to Jerry. All right. And the most popular pattern in this contest was Once in a Blue Moon. It had eight entries for the giveaway. So let's do the honors. Drum roll, please. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. It is 
Audrey Fleming. So congratulations to all the winners. And I will leave a comment on your comment along with my email address so you can email me your address and I will get your prizes out to you as soon as possible. So congratulations. Bye. Bye. All right. I will move along now and show you my whips, starting with my Temperature Garden by Sarah the Stitch and Mommy. I still really love stitching this piece, but I am concerned that a lot of you subscribers might be tired of seeing it in every video. So I'm just going to talk about it super fast. And if you're new here and haven't seen this before, you can go back to any one of my past videos and get the full scoop. Anyway, we are in July now and I am pretty much totally caught up with these three flowers and I was super psyched to get to stitch this six petal flower right here. And I was also relieved that we had some rain a little over a week ago and that cooled the temperatures down and I got to stitch in a couple orange petals. The yellow represents the highest temperatures in my scale and we've had a very hot summer and I was a bit concerned that I was going to end up with a lot of yellow flowers, which would not look the best, but I did get to stitch some orange and that was a relief both for the aesthetic of my temperature garden and also for just experiencing the weather on those days. The whip that I put the most stitches in over these past two weeks was my spring cat sampler by Nancy Rossi. And here I will edit in a little picture of what that pattern looks like. And here is how my piece is turning out so far. I unraveled it from my scroll frame this time so you can see it in its entirety. And I'm really proud of how much I have done. I believe I'm over halfway now. That would be my guess. Um, and since the last time you saw it, I have put in this entire border around these flowers, including the word Narcissus and the beginning of the cat here, the star of the show. Here, I will bring it up closer so you can kind of see it all in more detail. I am really proud of how this piece is turning out. It is totally worth the effort. I really love it. I have a little story that might make you chuckle about a lesson I learned while I was stitching my cat sampler, and that is don't drink and cross stitch. <laughs> um, alcohol is a very rare part of my life simply because I am such a nerd that I just never had those early social experiences that would teach me how to drink or to really gain a taste for alcoholic beverages. Same thing with Tim. Um, the two of us and our friends were just a bunch of nerds who would hang out and play Dungeons and Dragons. We didn't party. <laughs> um, and to this day, really the only time we ever drink alcohol is if my mother-in-law is serving wine with Christmas dinner or something. You know, that's just how we are. But um, this past week, we did buy a bottle of wine to use for cooking. And it turned out that that wine was pretty tasty. At least it was to me. And my palate for wine is just it's nothing, you guys. Who even knows if it's actually good wine? I just, I thought it was tasty. And one night I thought, hey, we have some leftover wine. Why don't I treat myself to a glass? You know, having a glass of wine at the end of a day is something normal adults do, right? <laughs> so I had some wine. I don't even own stemware. I literally put in like this much wine in a cup plastic exactly like this. <laughs> I'm so classy. I don't know what was up with that wine we bought because this itty bitty little cup that I had hit me so hard, you guys. And it was weird to me too, because even though I'm inexperienced at drinking, I know that I'm not a total lightweight, mostly because I'm not lightweight, you know. Um, But yeah, I ended up feeling really tipsy. And then I sat down to cross stitch because that's my favorite thing to do. And I found that being tipsy makes it a bit harder to count, but I was just laughing it off and having a good time stitching. And eventually I got to a stopping point and went to bed. Well, 
The next night when I sat down to stitch sober and right away discovered that the tipsy stitches that I had put in started in the wrong place. I had miscounted right on the very first stitch. <laughs> and I was like, oh no, I'm going to have to frog all of this. Ugh. So I started plucking out stitches, but I got about a third of the way through plucking them out and discovered <laughs> that I was stupid lucky enough to make a second mistake and totally skip a stitch, which then made my stitches, the rest of them, be in the correct place. And I hadn't made any other mistakes from there. So <laughs> I made a dumb decision, but lucked out and made not just one stupid mistake, but also another lucky mistake. And everything turned out fine. And I have some stitches left on my cap that were done when I was tipsy. So I will always <laughs> remember the lesson. Don't drink and cross stitch, Justine. Mm -mm. The last little bit of stitching I have to show is a new start. Yay. <laughs> I started Quaker Peace by remembering bygone stitches. And here is what I've done so far. I started in the top left corner of the pattern and I'm working this on my big scroll frame because it will be about 14 inches square when I'm finished with it. I think that's what the measurement was gonna be. And this is on 36 count fabric, which I've never stitched on before. It's 36 count fabric flare even weave in historic beige. And the floss I'm using is a variegated floss by Threadworks and it's called Pastel Bouquet. And I'm really thrilled with how this floss looks on this fabric and I am proud of myself for choosing it because um, this beige fabric and these pastels that have a bit of a wash of brown over them is just altogether more muted than I typically go for. I am much more used to choosing more clear pastel and bright colors. That's just what I'm accustomed to, what I'm naturally attracted to, but I wanted something a bit more sophisticated feeling for this particular pattern. So um, I still went with my pastels, but I went more muted and I am loving how it looks. And I am really proud of myself for going out of my box a little bit and having it turn out nice. Um, I am stitching this one over two and I am loving stitching with one thread on this 36 count fabric because it is so fuss free to just stitch with one strand. Easy breezy and 36 count is not too small. I am loving it. It really makes the stitches look beautiful. This isn't really that big of a start but I am already so addicted to working on this piece. I cannot wait to sit down and stitch on this one again. It is really, really fun. And it's just exactly the experience I was hoping for when I started it. I wanted this to be my sort of um, break piece to use time to time when I am sick of stitching on my cat sampler. But I do need to be prioritizing the cat sampler. So it'll be a couple days before I bring this one out again, but the next time you see it, there will definitely be more stitches in here so you can really get to see more of how beautiful this pastel floss is. I am absolutely in love. That's all I have to talk about today, and I am grateful to anyone watching this for tolerating my unusual story times today. That's it, folks. <laughs> God loves you and I love you, and happy stitching. Bye!